Hello and welcome to the Weekly Review, a program of Sawasawa Network. I'm the producer and host of the show. Today we are joined by Malek Mathian Malek, uh, a former Court of Appeal Justice uh, in the Republic of South Sudan. And our topic of discussion today is about the independence of the judiciary in South Sudan and uh, specifically we are focusing on uh, the case that Malek brought uh, before the East African Court of Justice uh, whereby he challenged uh, the decree issued by President Salva Kiir in 2017 that removed him and other judges from office. And the court uh, on Friday held that uh, the action of the president was in violation of the constitution of the Republic of South Sudan and uh, as well as uh, the treaty of the East African community. Welcome to the show, Malek, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the case itself. Uh, what motivated you to bring the case against the government of South Sudan? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, uh, the one thing was to do with the unconstitutionality of the degree of the president of 2017. Why? Because in the, in the, in the constitution, the, the 2017, it is there provided that if at all a judge or judges have committed a mistake, the judicial services of the judiciary of South Sudan should be the one to submit a recommendation for the dismissal of such a judge or judges from the judiciary. That thing did not happen. What happened was just simple. The chief justice of the judiciary of South Sudan was the one with other individuals who recommended to the president of the republic to remove 14 judges. Because of what? Because they were on a strike, one. Because they were telling the, the, the president of the republic to remove the chief justice. Or either him, the chief justice alone, to resign. No, the chief justice took that issue together with the president as a political issue. And because of that, the president dismissed the 14 justices and judges from the judiciary of South Sudan. No, that prohibition in the constitution of South Sudan could not go unless the judicial services of the judiciary of South Sudan make a, a recommendation for their dismissal. The judicial service did not do it. No investigation was done or carried out against the justices and judges to be removed. And because of that, I was of the view, no, this degree itself was first and constitutional, second and lawful. I initiated the case to the East African Court of Justice since 2017. But on the last Friday, the court made a, a decision agreeing with me that, in fact, the degree of the president was unconstitutional. The president degree was in fact unlawful. And not that alone, that the president degree was not inconsistent with the laws of the East African community, the East African court inclusive. So that was the decision. The degree is as for now out, it is not legal. Well, that no. was the whole well uh before, before we go further, uh, there was this report uh, shortly after you were, you were removed together with the other 13 judges and uh, when the issue of the strike went further and the president intervened, you are chair, the chairperson of the judges and uh, justice union, uh, Mr. Bol Lul, uh, he was quoted in the media saying that uh, the 14 judges were reinstated. That was in September, September uh, 2017, and uh, was that was that not true? You were not reinstated together with the rest, or some were reinstated, or no one was reinstated uh, when you agreed to go when when some agreed to go back to work. Even one, even 
even one justice or one judge is, is not reinstated. None of them. They are not yet. So the case went further to the East African Court of Justice and now there is a ruling. So are the rest with you or you are alone in the case? Of course, I was the only applicant. That's true. Mm -hmm. but, but in the real sense, the whole degree is cancelled. It's not only cancelled in, in my interest. It is for the whole 14 ju ju judges. Because if, if that degree is not there, what will be left? Any judge will be left reinstated automatically. That's the meaning of it. Uh, talking about the issue of the judges, you know, um, and independence of the judiciary in South Sudan in general. Uh, let me first start by asking you, uh, when were you appointed first? Uh, which year did you get appointed? You know, I was in the bush and I was appointed in 1999. No, as the judge of the Court of Appeal. 2006, yeah. mm. 2006, I was appointed as a president of higher court. Mm. And I was based in, in Juba for Central Equatorial State for 10 years, mm. as from 2006. About the Court of Appeal? Uh, On a strike for promotion. No, when you were met the, the uh, justice at the Court of Appeal, uh, when was that? It was in 2016. 2016? Yeah. Okay. And uh, if we are to follow the constitution, you know, uh, the constitution of South Sudan at that time, uh, and that is Article 134, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, requirements there that have not been met, especially on the establishment of Judicial Service Commission, uh, upon whose recommendation uh, judges, including uh, the Court of Appeal, uh, should be appointed. And uh, that body does not exist uh, in South Sudan, and even the act that was required to be enacted for it, uh, for it to operate is, has not been enacted. So, technically, even your appointment, don't you think there was a problem when you were appointed uh, in the Court of Appeal itself? No, uh, there is a judicial service commission. You are not aware of that. No, there is, that, there is that council, there is the council which is separate from the judicial service commission. That Judicial Service Commission, uh, by the Constitution, that is required. Uh, even the Act, it, uh, there is an Act required for establishing the Judicial Service Commission, and the Constitution required that, and that one has not been uh, enacted. So, what is the question? Huh? The question is, uh, when you want the Constitution followed uh, in your removal, when you were appointed, don't you think there was a problem also that that appointment was not in line with the Constitution itself? The 2011? Yes, the 2011 constitution. All the appointments, all the acts which were there before were recognized by the, by the interim constitution of South Sudan. Yes. And therefore, any institution which were there before was legal, was constitutional in accordance with the constitution. So there is no problem. You know, uh, this, the, the things you cited, that's why there is a conflict. Uh, between Judicial Service Commission and the other body that is currently uh, working. But uh, my point is, when it comes to the removal, even the body that currently uh, uh, you cited in the case, um, is, is, uh, there, there is that conflict between the, the powers uh, of the President. And you see, it brings the interference of the, the executive into the affairs of the uh, judiciary. That is why. Uh, several uh, other advocates have been calling for the establishment of that Judicial Service Commission so that uh, there is uh, clear boundaries between uh, the two arms of uh, the government. You, you, you know there are, there are two acts. Mm -hmm. Service Council Act. Mm -hmm. These two acts, if there is a problem with the judge, what happens is in the judicial in the, civil, uh, in the Civil Procedures Act, a committee is there to be formed to make an investigation. Mm -hmm. When it finishes, that thing needs to be taken to the Judicial Service Council. 
It is the Unity Service Council through the Chief Justice, which will take that a recommendation to the President of the Republic. And then accordingly, in this situation, in, in accordance with the Article 134, the President of the Republic then will remove a judge or justice from the judiciary. But no, this thing did not happen in that way. It was a direct recommendation to the President of, of the Republic. And then immediately, the President removed the 14 uh, judges. Now, I'm saying what was supposed to be done before, before the dismissal of the judges was not done in accordance with the Civil Procedures Act and in accordance with the civil uh, the, of the uh, of the civil i mean the council act they yes, were yes. not done yeah. yes yes yeah i agree i agree if they were not done mm. then the president was supposed to dismiss the judges without mm. uh, without having the judges removed mm. uh, yes uh, Yes, I agree with you, and uh, I also uh, would like to point out that uh, the body that is uh, recognized by the Constitution itself, Article 134, uh, sub Article 2, is a Judicial Service Commission, which does not exist itself. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not the same uh, body uh, that, the, the, that is in the Act. Uh, uh, and um, this is something that uh, has not been fulfilled by the government in a uh, uh, enacting a judicial service uh, commission act uh, but there are now uh, require there are now some of the provisions of uh, the revitalized agreement that uh, also point to the reform in the in the judiciary no problem uh, let's move forward uh, uh, right now do you think the government is going to honor the the judgment of course this government is not the government of the rule of law they don't respect the principle of the rule of law and therefore, I assume they will just simply defy it. Mm. They are not concerned about the, the laws. But what is very important is that the degree itself is, is as for now, unconstitutional, unlawful. And that thing to me is enough, even if they don't accept to implement the degree. Mm. The East African Court of Justice judgment, if they refuse it, it is up to them. But at the end of the day, everybody is now aware that that degree is out, mm -hmm. is not constitutional. So there is no problem. But I'm sure that they will not implement it because they don't respect the principle of the rule of law. Otherwise, they were not supposed, they would not have dismissed us if they respect the, the rule of law. And uh, how was the situation generally working uh, in the judiciary, uh, given your experience? Uh, working for all this period in, the, in uh, different courts in South Sudan. Um, what, what do you say about the principle of uh, this uh, independence of judiciary? Uh, uh, the judiciary is not 100% uh, independent. Like, for instance, the appointment of the chief justice. Mm -hmm. by the president of the republic. Mm. The pre president of the republic would just simply decide to appoint and to dismiss. And because of that, the chief justice, the chief justice would, would fear the president. Mm. Because of what? Tomorrow, he may be dismissed without any process. Now, in that sense, the chief justice being fearing the president he will, of course, interfere with the work of the judges for the interest of the president. Like dismissing us, it was simply the president wanted us to be dismissed. Mm. And you could not defy the president, otherwise you would dismiss him. So in that sense, the judiciary is not independent because the chief justice himself will make an influence on the judges in order not to be independent yeah, so in that sense uh, in, in the, the constitution itself the, in the constitution uh, yeah. itself the judiciary is not in the independent because of the appointment of the chief justice now when you come that's one that's constitutionally that's the law 
But again, there are laws which are making the judiciary independent, well and good. But practically, the chief justice would not follow those provisions. Why? Because he is there as a political appoint appointee mm -hmm. and not as a chief justice. In other in the other countries, a chief justice is not just automatically appointed or dismissed by the president like that. No, that should be process to be followed. So in that sense, the judiciary is not independent. Mm -hmm. And when you come again, in the what when the judges are making decision, the decision mostly are not implemented. Mm -hmm. Because some institution would interfere. To be against the implementation of the court judgments. And because of that, the judiciary is not independent. Now I cannot have a judgment which is not implemented, and then I'm called to be a judge. In that sense, generally, I'm telling you, our judiciary is not independent. Because of the laws, the constitution, and because of the practicability mm -hmm. in our country. And uh, simple administrative issues within the judiciary have been uh, really uh, problematic. Uh, somebody also worked there, apart from the uh, uh, parts which are related to the laws and uh, the interference from the, judiciary, the, the executive, there are issues within the judiciary itself that were not moving forward well. Uh, administratively, which uh, would have been easier to move on. What, what were the challenges? Um, what, what, are they, what were the problems making just internal uh, issues within the uh, judiciary, not uh, up to standard with other other countries? Even simple things like uh, cases uh, for the public to you know to access, including having an online you know uh, a platform whereby people will follow how the judiciary operate and. Uh, Access cases and uh, and see how uh, you know the jurisprudence of South Sudan. These are not happening. Uh, what I know so far is that for the judiciary to be functional, judges should be protected first. Mm -hmm. Judges should be delivered services. Mm -hmm. If those things do not happen, the judges will be reluctant. Mm -hmm. They will not work. As I'm talking with you, as for now, I'm telling you, the judges, they don't have transport means, no cars. And therefore, they would decide to go to the court or not. They are free. One. Two, the judges, they have no security service. And sometimes some of them are, in fact, sentencing uh, accused person to death. How will I not be sentencing a accused person to death and I'm not protected? The judges also will be fearing. Mm -hmm. Not that alone. The salaries that they are at, they are not enough. They are not at all enough. And therefore, the judge will say, okay, what, do, what am I doing now? Because they are also having uh, families like, like the rest. Such a judge in such a situation. How will you expect him or her to be administering justice? I don't think so. And therefore, this judiciary of South Sudan needs a long, mm -hmm. a wide transformation. Uh, Starting from the remo removal of the chief justice and so many other things to be done first in, the, in order for the, the judiciary to be the, real, to be the real judiciary of South Sudan. There is money. Money, money normally comes also from uh, uh, the, the judiciary. Where does that money go if uh, those simple things you have mentioned cannot be done uh, within? Uh, where does that money? Why are you not able to to solve them? What? What? Of course, you know the the, the money in the judiciary is not so much enough as people may think. But what I know is that that money, there is forty percent. 40% for the judiciary, and then 60% for the Minister of Finance, that is for the public, is what I know about that money. But that money, by the way, is not enough. 
is not at all enough. I'm sure of that one. But that 40 percent is now the question now is where does it go? You may ask the Chief Justice Chandra Madut. He knows it better than me. Well, uh, you, you, yeah, you mentioned that issue, but also you see when it comes to budgeting, also the law, uh, Article One Twenty Five, uh, Sub Article Two of the Constitution, uh, South Sudan Constitution 2011, uh, made the budget uh, of the judiciary uh, to be approved by uh, uh, the, nation, the National Judicial Service Commission, which itself does not exist, and uh, uh, also requires the assent of the President, and that it shall be charged on the consolidated fund, and uh, it shall have financial independence and the management so, so in the management, so you find uh, there is this law, but the problem is the implementation. This is what I was telling you. You know, sometimes you may have the law, and if it is not followed, then there is no law. Mm. That's the whole thing. Well, you know, the body are saying that it is not there, it is there because it is there. Even the budget, it is the one. When I was there, it was the one approving the budget of the judiciary, and then it is submitted to the president. So the issue, you know, the constitution and the laws, sometimes the laws mm -hmm. may be there before the constitution was enacted, but they are recognized by the constitution. So that law is there. The, Ju the Judicial Service Council Act is there, mm -hmm. 2008. And the constitution was in 2011. And that constitution was recognizing the laws before. Because even the Female Court Act was enacted in, enacted in 2008. And the constitution was in 2011. But this constitution recognized the previous laws which were that act. So I don't see that there is any contradiction. There is no problem. The problem is the practice. Now, now that law mm -hmm. is a legal law. Mm -hmm. is, is a legal, legitimate law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what is going to be next for you uh, after the ruling? Uh, what, what's what's next for you? Well, ruling, of course, there is a part to do with the cost. So mm -hmm. I will apply for the cost of litigation. Mm -hmm. I may get. That is my first priority to ask for now. As for the implementation of the of the degree, mm -hmm. it is up for the government of South Sudan to implement it or not. If they implement it, okay, I will be optional to go or not to go. To South Sudan. Sudan. To South Sudan. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, there is the uh, there is the third. Uh, Part of the ruling which uh, also awarded cost to the second respondent uh, against you the applicant so it is true you the alleging that this african secretary general mm -hmm. failed to conduct investigation into into, into the judge's situation in south sudan mm -hmm. but the court was saying that there was no way for the secretary general to doing that that thing and therefore, my application to the Secretary General was wrong. And if it were to be wrong, then of course, I should pay back the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the part of that. Do you, do you regret that you regret that I want to pay that? No. You know, the, the, I, why should I regret? Because uh, that was my assumption. Mm -hmm. But the law now is saying that they were not wrong. Mm -hmm. Because in the East African uh, laws, it's saying that the, the SG of the East African community mm -hmm. should make an investigation to the situation in, a, in every country that which is a member. Mm -hmm. So I was assuming when there were crises in South Sudan, the SG of the East African community would go down to know actually what was taking place. Mm -hmm. And the assumption could be that the SG could, could assist mm -hmm. such that the judges could not be dismissed 
if they were to to conduct the investigation that's the meaning of that law that they ask you to go there to make conduct investigation and then they would interfere to solve the problem they might have gone there and they say you the chief justice these judges are having a right these judges should not be dismissed so that's why it was a party to their case but well, the court uh, had said no mm -hmm. they did not make a mistake mm -hmm. and therefore yeah no problem for me i've accepted i will not feel uh, uh, well uh, the court has already asked it has is ruling uh, uh, as we are about to conclude the show i would like to ask you a final question that uh, since as you as somebody who worked in the judiciary and you know what is happening there in and out and uh, uh, you already know the need for reforms that need to be done and uh, right now we have the revitalized agreement uh, providing for a lot of reforms that need to be undertaken during this transitional period uh, in many other areas but also in uh, the judiciary what advice do you have to the people of South Sudan in uh, making sure that they are part of this uh, important task of reforming the, the judiciary and uh, in what uh, sense they should see it as very uh, see it as very important to have the judiciary reform in the peace agreement of 2018 are you getting me hello yes yes i'm getting you uh, in the peace agreement of 2018 there is a provision there that there should be a reform transformation for the judiciary of south sudan now in that sense people are proposing for a constitutional court mm -hmm. apart from the supreme court of south sudan that one the supreme court the constitutional court will be for the general rights of the people the mm -hmm. constitutional court and therefore in my view there is no life without the rule of law without proper rule of law in south sudan the main problems which are not taking place in south sudan is simply because of the rule of law if there is rule of law there would be no corruption if there is rule of law there would be no tribalism if there is rule of law people would not fight if there is rule of law there would be no rapes if there rule of law there would be a lot of things would not be there there would be development but if there is no rule of law the situation would remain as we are in now people will be going for rebellion they come back they stay they go back because there is no law people don't follow the law so i'm telling the south sudanese people that all of you all of us should be for the principle of the rule of law and in south sudan we are having two laws written and unwritten there are written laws these are customer laws for the whole south sudanese and they follow them the problem is now with the written laws people don't follow them if they are followed there would be no problem if they are followed i was not going to be dismissed by the way but because they are not followed there are always crises and this crisis i'm telling, telling you would not stop and the only way out is for this president to go if he goes, would be anyone, anyone who, who will be an example for the rest. You see, you no, know, President Kira, the person is not corrupt. But what about his ministers? A minister will be corrupting, corrupting, he, he will not ask. He will just leave him free. That minister who is free will be encouraging others yeah. to join that club of corruption. So as a judge, you are, you, are, you, you, are, you are fully confident the president is not corrupt? Mm. Indirectly corrupt. Why? Because mm. he, he is there indirectly corrupt because he is leaving his ministers mm. freely. Those who are corrupt, like Mayik, like Ezekiel, are they not in the court? Mm. But they are corrupt ministers and there are so many others. He is now maintaining these people. In that sense, he is corrupt, but he is not the one who is taking the money. That's my belief. And because of that situation, he should go. 
He is not able to rule us. He should go and another South Sudanese person would come. That person would come. He may be corrupt even. You, you, you make him to be corrupt. But he will be in prison, these corrupt ministers. Then they will fear. But this one, no. A corrupt person is a good person to him. And he is not making corruption. The, the South Sudanese, they know that one. So, no, why should he be there? Should he be there because he's a good person? No. We are not for somebody, a kind person. We are not for a kind person. We are for a good leader for us to develop. And because of that, I'm telling the South Sudanese, you, you convince him, the President Kiir, to go. And then you have another one. Not because Al Fakir is a bad person, as such, but no, he is just a, a kind per for, person for nothing. And we are not in a need for a kind person for nothing. We are, need, we are in a need of a president who will be for the rule of law. And therefore, I am recommending mm -hmm. to the whole South Sudanese that let's we talk with Al Fakir, let him go. And then you bring, you, the South Sudanese, you also advise. For another person to be replacing himself on uh, more than more than more than on and more than individuals you agree that there is a need for legal reforms especially on the issue of presidential powers on the removal of the chief justice and the appointment of the chief justice like you said it makes him more loyal to the president oh, yeah. that one of course that one is not is not a, a mistake of self care it is a mistake of the lawmaker. Why did they accept that thing? No, for self there is a power that he is using. For him, no. For the chief justice to be for him, that provision is good. Because he would just at other time dismiss the chief justice. And that chief justice, in order not to be dismissed, he will be good with self And Meaning what? Meaning that he will be good with him from the political point of view. And not from the judicial point of view. And therefore, with that, we have come to the end uh, of uh, this program for this week. Uh, thank you uh, first to our guest, uh, Malek uh, Mathia Malek, and also you, the audience. Thank you very much for following us. Keep on following us on social media, and uh, we will meet uh, next week. Mm -hmm.